força. Ah, Pirates of the Caribbean. You started out so strong, you kept on going so strong, then you took a bit of a tumble, but you were still okay. And finally... Oh. If I had to define Pirates as a film franchise, I would do it as follows. It's one of those series of movies that work as one complete united trilogy. And after years of hiatus, the studio or the filmmakers then decide to return to the franchise in hopes to recapture the spirit which made that original trilogy special. But as is the case with so many franchises, most of the time those recapture attempts just don't work out the way one could have hoped. They aren't necessarily bad, they aren't necessarily even redundant. But overall, most of them are unable to make the audience feel the same way those originals did. Even though Dead Man Tell No Tales by Quality did mark the new low point for the Pirates franchise, the fact remains that it still made bank at the box office. Which means that, by logic, it should be only a matter of time before the sixth movie hits theaters. And I think that's a good thing. Not everyone might agree, and while I understand why you wouldn't, to me this franchise does still have potential. And honestly... This can't be the one we leave off on. But that then begs the question, how do you come back from this and successfully go back to this? How do you make a new Pirates movie today in a way that not only works, but also makes the audience feel like the original trilogy once did? That's what we're here to answer, that's what this brand new show is for. And what better way to start the show off than with Pirates of the Caribbean? What we're gonna do is this, we're gonna go through the Pirates franchise in order and take one essential element from each of the five movies. That element might be a positive thing to replicate, or it might be a negative thing to learn from. And with this method of replicating and learning, we're going to find out how exactly to make Pirates of the Caribbean 6 great. AKA, we're creating a blueprint for greatness. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Without Jack Sparrow, there is no Pirates. If the filmmakers want Pirates of the Caribbean 6 to have even a chance of working, they need Jack. Not a second-rate Jack, not an imposter Jack, the real Captain Jack. They need the Jack from The Curse of the Black Pearl. Obviously, the character wouldn't be exactly the same. He'd be older, he'd be a bit different, of course. But when I bring up Jack of The Curse of the Black Pearl, I don't mean the character itself as much as I mean the man behind the character. I mean Johnny Depp. In order for Pirate 6 to be great, Johnny Depp has to genuinely be back on board. He can't just show up to set hours late and phone it in for the money. He has to play this role with the same dedication and excitement as he did in the first movie. Or at the very least somewhere close to it. You can hire the original writers, you can hire the most talented director working right now, and it won't matter one bit. Not unless Johnny Depp brings his A-game. Because just like there is no Pirates without Jack, there is no Jack without Johnny Depp. Also, since it has been one and a half decade from the first film, the sad fact exists that this franchise is running on its last breath. Which is why I personally think this sixth installment should be the final one. And it should conclude the story of Captain Jack Sparrow. Rewatching through the movies, I realized for the very first time that the conclusions so far haven't been very diverse. Or in other words, they've all been the same. First movie, second and third movie, fourth movie, fifth movie. Every last one of those four stories has ended the exact same way. With Jack moving on from his latest pirating adventure and preparing to sail off to the next one. And really bad eggs. Drink up, me hearty Joe ho The devil's in black sheep. Really bad eggs. So the pearl. Any idea how to get her out? I have no say in it, Gibbs. It's a pirate's life for me. Savvy. I have a rendezvous beyond my beloved horizon.
If the sixth film does ever get made and it's the last one like it honestly should be, it needs to give a definitive conclusion to Jack's character arc. And in order for that conclusion to be definitive, it has to be different from the conclusions we've seen before. Which essentially leaves us with two options. Either Jack hangs up his hat and ends his pyro career for good, or then he dies. Now, I know, neither of those two options sounds too good right now. Jack Sparrow can't just end his pirate career, he's the definition of a pirate. And he can't die either, because uh, Jack Sparrow can't die. Fair play, that is true. But who knows, maybe after we go through all these five points, we'll manage to find that one perfect ending to once and for all conclude Jack's story. Maybe, stay tuned to find out. Regardless, in order for Pirate 6 to have even a chance of working, it has to feature the one real Jack we all fell in love with in The Curse of the Black Pearl. Bringing in Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott as the writers will definitely help, but the only person who's truly able to bring this real Captain Jack back is Johnny Depp. To me, Dead Man's Chest rises above all other Pirates films to be the best entry in the franchise. The reason for this is the villains. And maybe also the fact that this was the first Pirates film I saw, but uh, mostly the villains. Cutler Beckett is a fantastic villain. He's memorable and he's the perfect proponent of anti-theme. If you don't know what anti-theme is, essentially it's like this. One major theme in Dead Man's Chest is freedom, since freedom is what defines a pirate's life. Beckett on the other hand represents a worldwide corporation aiming to take that freedom away, aka he represents the anti-theme. Look closely and you'll see multiple hints at this anti-theme sprinkled throughout the movie. East India Trading Company spices found at the remote Cannibal Island, the Flying Dutchman itself ending up in a leash, the huge map being painted on Beckett's wall. The map is there to visually indicate that the entire world is quickly being charted, as in soon there's nowhere left for people like pirates to go, their freedom is being taken from them. The map is finished, sir. Just the way I imagined it. But no matter how great Beckett might be, let's be honest, the real evil star of Dead Man's Chest is the dead man himself, Davy Jones. He's a very well acted, very entertaining, very layered villain who feels more human than most human villains we see in movies. And to be fair, even after a decade the CGI is still very impressive. While I usually am against using the same bad guys multiple times, with Davy Jones I have to make an exception. This because the later movies did already try to replace him with another supernatural villain. They tried it with Blackbeard, they tried it with Salazar, and neither of them really worked out so great. So, instead of once again using some second-rate Davy Jones, it'd be best for the filmmakers to just bring back Davy Jones. Case in point, Salazar's personal revenge mission on Jack ultimately felt very impersonal, because we had never seen or heard of Salazar before. But with Davy Jones, we know exactly who he is and why he would come take revenge on Jack and other pirates. I mean, just look at what was done to him. First, the one true love of his life was used against him, and then he was stabbed through the heart and cast to the bottom of the sea. If that doesn't make you go crazy and throw you on a path of destruction and revenge, I don't know what will. Also, just to make things up, this time Davy Jones shouldn't have a crew. Instead, the sixth movie should make him go alone, and just give him a new sea monster that he controls. Not the Kraken again, but some other sea monster. Something like the Leviathan. Just picture this, an unhinged and enraged Davy Jones riding a massive sea serpent, speeding directly towards Jack. Now that's a movie I would show up to. I've heard some audiences criticize At World's End for being too long and too bloated, and that's fair. And while I don't consider this film to be as good as Dead Man's Chest, at the same time I do very much enjoy one specific aspect about it. It has higher stakes than any other Pirates movie. We have very high external stakes, all pirates from across the globe having to band together for one last stand to preserve their freedom. We have very high internal stakes, Will having to push Elizabeth away in order to free his father from the Flying Dutchman. Jack forced to make a final decision between a limited life of freedom and an eternal life chained to the Dutchman. External stakes, internal stakes. 
If there's one thing Pirate 6 should try to capture from the third movie, it's this feeling of finality in form of high stakes. As in, everything is on the line. Everything that happens will have massive consequences everywhere, since we already decided that the sixth film should be the last. What could the external stakes of the new movie be? Well, because David Jones is coming back, it's pretty obvious. Jack has to stop him or suffer the consequences. Right at the start, David Jones should kill off someone close to Jack. Maybe that's Will, maybe that's Jack's father, not sure. But it has to be someone very close to him. This in order to make the story feel even more personal to Jack and to make the stakes clear right away. However it might go exactly, one thing has to be established. If Jack doesn't defeat Davy Jones and his new sea monster once and for all, everything and everyone around him will be destroyed. As for internal stakes, this brings us back to the first point, where I talked about Jack having to change as a character for the conclusion. Obviously, it's pretty clear to everyone that Jack isn't the most unselfish person. So maybe at first he's shrugging the destruction off and making it seem like all he cares about is himself. But at the end, in order to defeat Davy Jones, Jack has no choice but to evolve as a person. And this in turn would lead us to that new kind of ending I was talking about earlier. An ending that would definitively conclude Jack's character arc. What that ending is exactly, I'm still not quite sure yet. But we're getting closer. Regardless, if the new movie wants to feel as big as At World's End, it has to add high stakes. External stakes, internal stakes. The reason why On Stranger Tides always felt like such an unimportant spin-off was the lack of familiar faces. Aside from maybe Jack, Gibbs and Barbosa, pretty much everyone we got to know in the original trilogy was gone. Perhaps this was intentional, perhaps the filmmakers wanted this movie to stand as its own separate thing. Could be. But in my opinion, this was a mistake. Especially since most of these new faces were all pretty meh. That priest? I still don't know his name. And I never intend to find out, because frankly, I don't care. This interspecies romance between him and the one mermaid, I don't care. If the sixth film wants to recapture the feeling of the original trilogy, it has to learn from this mistake made by On Stranger Tides. Meaning it has to bring back more of the original characters. Maybe it could even pull off a Days of Future Past and join the old faces and the new faces together. Bring in some of the original crew, bring in Pinto and Regetti. Bring in some of the new crew, bring in Karina Smith. Bring in Will or Elizabeth, if there's a good way to make that work. Bring all of these people together for this one big last venture. Obviously, the one person you can't just bring in is Barbosa. You know, all things considered. But still, that doesn't mean that Barbosa can't be a central part of the story. In fact, the whole story could actually revolve around getting Barbosa back, since we now know that he has a daughter, Karina. Same way Barbosa brought Jack back to life once before, maybe this time Jack can bring him back to life and give him a new chance to be with his daughter. Again, if there's a proper way to make this work. And I think there is. Since we're using Davy Jones as the villain, Barbosa's fate could have something to do with him. Maybe Barbosa isn't dead after all, maybe he's held captive and endlessly tormented by the unhinged Davy Jones. And when Karina hears about this, she of course sets out to rescue her father. And somehow, Jack ends up joining her, along with all these other characters we know. All these familiar faces. Oh, and by the way, this mission of rescuing Barbosa could actually be a great way for the film to develop Jack as a character and give his story arc that conclusion we've never seen before. I know I've always given Dead Men Tell No Tales a hard time. And honestly, I've done it because it deserves it. But still, there is one moment in this movie that I think worked magnificently. The moment when Barbosa sacrifices his own life to save the life of his daughter. And this emotional moment is something that the new Pirates movie should keep in mind. At the end of Pirates of the Caribbean 6, one specific character should make a similar act of self-sacrifice. Specifically, Captain Jack Sparrow. We all know Captain Jack as a selfish scoundrel, so in order to successfully develop him as a character and conclude his story arc in a never before seen way, at the very end he should sacrifice his own life to save someone else. You might say that's not who Jack Sparrow is, but that's kind of the point. Jack has never drastically changed over the course of the five films, so it would be the perfect way to finish his story. At the end of the sixth film, it should all come down to a battle between Jack and Davy Jones. 
and maybe this time Jack just cannot pull off a win. Maybe the only way to defeat Davy Jones is for Jack to bring him down with himself. Maybe he finally understands that since he doesn't have a special person in his life, he should sacrifice himself for someone who does. That someone being Barbosa. Imagine this, Barbosa is on the brink of death, held hostage by Davy Jones. And now, after all this time of selfish resistance and denial, Jack at long last realizes the tough choice he has to make in order to get Barbosa free. He defeats Jones by sacrificing himself. He gives his own life in return for Barbosa's, so that Barbosa can finally be with his daughter. In other words, Captain Jack Sparrow concludes his own story by, for the first time ever, making a selfless act of sacrifice. You might say this is too much, but I don't think so. I'd say it's a great way to honor Jack's death set up in Dead Man's Chest. And I'd also say it's a great reversal of Barbosa coming to Debbie Jones's locker to save Jack in Atwell's End. Honestly, I was already expecting Jack to make this sacrifice when I saw Dead Men Tell No Tales. Instead of just casually hanging by and watching Karina once again lose her long lost father, he should have been the one to jump down to stop Salazar in place of Barbosa. But uh, I guess it is lucky that didn't happen, because honestly, the whole thing would have been one big waste if it took place in this movie. Plus, if you think Captain Jack dying is a step too far, you could also do it like The Dark Knight Rises. We think Jack Sparrow is dead, but then right before the credits, we get one quick hint that he's actually not. Instead, he has just finally hung up his hat and ended his pirate career for good. The same way Batman dies but Bruce Wayne lives on, Captain Jack dies but Jack Sparrow is still very much alive. Somewhere beyond the sea. And this, combined with all the earlier points, is how you can successfully finish the story of Captain Jack Sparrow. It's how you can make Pirates of the Caribbean 6 great. Alrighty then, fellas and fellerets, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on the points we discussed here today. Agree? Disagree? Let me know. And also, tell me how you would make Pirate 6 great. And if there should be a Pirate 6 to begin with, comment below. Thanks for watching.